Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and do you know what time it is? It's time for another episode of Watch and Learn. It's been a long time, no pun intended, uh, between Watch and Learn episodes. I've been so busy with the Islanders and everything else, obviously, that comes along with you know, running a business. Uh, so today we're going to talk about anti-reflective crystals, mostly anti-reflective coating, what it is, uh, how it works, and uh, do you want it, do you not want it, uh, you know, we'll get into just the basics of it. I'm not an optics engineer at all, but this is kind of fairly basic stuff that we'll do. Um, I, I guess I'll do a wrist check since I was so happy that this watch is back on my wrist. Uh, my Squale Matic that I put on a white rubber strap. It's been out of the rotation for quite some time now. Um, so I'm so glad it's back and I figured I would just do a double Squale day. So my 1521 polished blue. Two beautiful blue watches. This one, the blue, is a knockout. My Islander 09 was certainly inspired by the color scheme of this watch. Um, let's talk AR. Okay, so we're going to get into anti-reflective or AR-coated crystals. I mean, I have two crystals in my hand. One's AR-coated, treated. One is not. There's not that much of a difference to see. I'll show you a couple of things, but most of this is going to be, I guess, on pencil and paper, uh, showing you how it works. It's very difficult to appreciate how it works unless you're in exactly the right uh, situation. Um, anti-reflective, also known as anti-glare in the eyeglass industry or in the telescope industry. Um, pretty much it is born from the eyeglass industry, from cutting, cutting uh, backscatter uh, into people's eyes when light is uh, at a source behind them and it hits their glasses and hits them in the eyeball. Now that's where kind of anti-glare comes from. The watch industry, I, I guess, sort of hijacked it. Um, but one thing that anti-glare does that people need to understand, I have a, an uncoated piece of sapphire in my right hand and I have a coated AR on the underside in my left hand. They, even though they're both clear, this definitely has some opaqueness to it. There is certainly less transmissivity going on, which is why some manufacturers like Marathon, they refuse to use AR coatings on their crystals because it cuts down on what you can see of the dial whereas this sapphire replacement for 007 is 100 optically clear well not 100 percent, but it's very clear this there's some scatter obviously um this guy you can see is just a little bit duller right um so what is going on here well i'm going to draw and i'm not very good at drawing but Let's just assume that this is the plane, we're looking, so the crystal is coming out at you, we're looking at it from the side, of an uncoated regular crystal. Light comes in, okay, it bends a little bit because of refraction, not important, but whatever, and then it bends back and goes to the watch dial, reflects, and then we see the watch itself. But every time light passes from one medium, this is air, right, this is glass, it gives off at the, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, you get a, a ray of light that comes back at you. Now, of course, with anti-glare, we're really considering not the off-angle case, the case when it's directly into your face, um, staring right at it. Um, but for illustrative purposes, this is much easier. Uh, so there's a, uh, a reflected ray here, and there's also a reflected ray here. Uh, and this is what you consider as glare. Uh, anti-reflective coatings seek to minimize this. That's why some manufacturers have an AR coating on both the outside and the inside to do away with both of these reflections. But as we know, the outside of a watch crystal is subject to bumps and bruises. Uh, an AR coating, though can be applied extremely, extremely resilient and hardy, still can scratch if you scratch the crystal. A company like Damasco that uses it inside and out they're using almost like a DLC process to apply the coating to the glass. I understand it's not metallic, but uh, it's on there really good and it's really tough to scratch it. But for most of your lower cost sapphire crystals, uh, they're usually just coating the inside of the crystal. Anyway, uh, so this is what we're seeking to minimize. Uh, this part, if your eyeball, here's your eye, you're, you're getting these reflected rays. Now again, I'm only showing you 
flat crystal, okay? Obviously, curved crystals, this works the same exact thing, but with curved crystals, the angle is constantly changing because the crystal is domed, uh, and you're going to definitely see some kind of reflection because it's always going off at a different angle. AR truly speaks the best when it's on a flat crystal, and especially if it's done inside and out. Um, so what is exactly at play here? Well, let's, um, what I'm going to do is redraw this with an AR coating on the outside, not drawn to scale. Uh, and let's see if we can figure out what is going on. So I apologize for the absolute crudeness of the drawing, uh, but I don't want to lift someone else's work off of, uh, off of Google. Um, excuse me while I make my markings here. As you can see, I'm not a very neat person. Uh, so this is light coming in, this is light going out. So light travels as both a particle and a wave, the duality of light. Um, not really important, but what is important is that every color of light, well, visible light itself has a specific wavelength, what's light, 300 to 700 nanometers, or whatever. Uh, but this is the wavelength of incoming light. So this is, here's your crystal, here's your anti-reflective coating, your watch face is somewhere down here. So light is coming in. Okay, light hits. Let's go a little closer. Light hits the AR coating first. Okay, change in medium, so it reflects. So the the wave continues and it goes back and it keeps reflecting out. No change in the wave. Some of the light, or a lot of the light, I should say, keeps going through the AR coating and eventually hits the the interface between the AR and the crystal. Now what is extremely important, and I guess I should have drawn it, is that this thickness here is tightly controlled to be a quarter wavelength, a lambda over four. So the light is traveling a quarter wavelength this way, a quarter wavelength this way. So if you add a quarter and a quarter, what do you get? Well, you get a half. What that does is it puts these 180 degrees out of phase so that the reflected ray from here and the reflected ray from here are both going in this direction and they're, they're, they're parallel to each other but they add up to dis they destructively interfere with each other so the net effect of this is actually zero you don't see any light this is the kind of the same way a pair of noise canceling headphones uh, works for um, no, noise right uh, it takes uh, airplane noise right it it, it receives it, it flips the uh, polarity of the signal, what's negative is positive, what's positive is negative, and it pumps it into a little speaker that's by your ear, and you the net effect you hear is almost nothing. So basically AR is kind of noise cancellation, except it's noise cancellation for light. For watches, um, yes, the AR is on the inside, I understand that, um, but for watches, very simple, usually just one layer of AR. There's different colors of AR that they can use, but it's always a quarter wavelength of the light they want to minimize. Generally, they'll shoot for mid-band of uh, the visible light spectrum to kind of eliminate the most light that they can. Um, when you get into eyeglasses, when you get into tele, uh, um, excuse me, telescope optics and stuff, <clears throat> they'll use different substrates and they'll stack AR coatings multiple times and eliminate a lot of visible light uh, so that they can get uh, almost no glare. And you know, that, that stuff's really expensive. Um, but we're just talking about simple um, sapphire crystals where they spray uh, or not spray, I should say, they deposit a very thin, guys, this is very thin, so 500 nanometers over four, it's 125 nanometers, that's very, very, very small, uh, 125, what is nanometers times 10 to negative ninth meters, uh, extremely, extremely small, uh, but that's really all it's doing, I hope you can kind of get what this wave plus this wave equals flat line, right? equals zero. Um, again, it works best when you're looking directly at it. Uh, that's kind of where it's meant to be when you're staring directly at your watch uh, so that the light coming into your eye is kind of um, is minimized, but that's the way AR works. I really wanted to finish the video with a great comparison um, between uh, non-coded and coded crystals, but it's so difficult for me to portray on camera so I thought what I'd do is just invite, you know, two people to the party. Um, extreme examples, totally uncoded in my left hand, coded 
front and back in my right hand. And you could just see, just in the movement of the watch, how the Damasco, of course, is going to reflect the light. When the light hits it, it's always going to reflect it. But you can see how in the right angle, the Damasco looks like it's not even sporting a crystal. Whereas with the Seiko, forget the bevel on the edges. It almost, it never stops giving a reflection, no matter what. Whereas with the Damasco, when I hit it in the right area, and in a relatively wide swath here, it looks like there's nothing here at all. So that's really what AR gets you. AR gets you, you know, it, it takes away the reflections, obviously, but it does take away some, you know, transmissivity. Uh, you cannot see the watch as well as when it's totally clear. And like I said, that's why Marathon doesn't use it. And maybe that's why Seiko... I mean, obviously, don't have sapphire crystals either, but maybe that's why Seiko does it on these guys. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, that'll do it. This has been Mark from LongIronWatch.com showing you, uh, I guess, what AR is and <laughs> a little bit of a, an optics lesson. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe channel if you have not done so. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.